Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Dr. Lynn Patterson. I had the pleasure to work with the Smart Cities REU RET program this summer, which was hosted by Morgan State University. My team members were Terrence McKay, Kayla Thompson, Christian Amia, our mentor, and our advisor, Dr. Kofi Niarko. At this time, we present to you our project, Traffic Video Analytics. According to the National Safety Council, about 4.4 million people were injured in car crashes in 2019, while about 38,800 people lost their lives. Wow, did you hear that? 38,800 people lost their lives. The Traffic Video Analytic Project strives to build a, a model that will extract data that could be used to inform traffic protocols and laws. For our model, we use the techniques of computer vision and machine learning. While there are many uses for this type of model and data, a few include vehicle counting, localization, and identification. To build our model, we settled on Python OpenCV library, YOLO machine learning model, Coco Caption dataset, and Raspberry Pi as well as the Raspberry Pi camera. And now Terrence with our research process flow. So our first step actually started about two weeks before the program started, and it was to gain an understanding of the fundamentals of Python and OpenCV. OpenCV is a library of programming functions mainly used for computer vision, and computer vision allows the computer to process and make decisions based on videos and images. So once Python and OpenCV were installed on our individual machines, we then completed practice exercises and online tutorials to really get a feel for Python and OpenCV. Once we did that, our next steps were to learn and apply our two methods of object detection, the first one being background subtraction, and the second being the YOLO machine learning model. After that, we then optimized both methods to try to get the best results we could, and then compared the results, and then the strengths and weaknesses of both methods. Here we go in depth on background subtraction. So background subtraction works on the idea of subtracting moving elements of a video from the stationary background and comparing the absolute difference. It works by taking in a video and then converting it to grayscale and then highlighting any moving objects white. This can be seen in the video on the upper right. The final result is, that the, is the video on the lower right where the moving objects are being detected and bounding boxes are drawn around them as they move through the video. And now Kayla will introduce us to the YOLO machine learning model. Another method we decided to use is YOLO, which is a real-time object detection system that uses deep learning algorithms for object detection. Some of the required files to run YOLO are the YOLO weights and configuration files. So the weight file is the pre-trained model and it's trained on the COCO names file. The COCO file is a captioning data set that contains a list of the 80 classification labels total. So what this snippet of code here is doing is basically reading the pre-trained model and configuration file, and then it loads the network into the program. YOLO v3.cfg is the software configuration file, and we need that because that contains the layout of the functions that make YOLO work. The YOLO detector is capable of predicting bounding boxes, class labels, and confidence numbers. So as you can see here in this video, the confidence number is attached to each detected bounding box. The confidence number represents the accuracy of the predicted class in terms of percentage. The predictions made by the machine are based on its ability to observe patterns and relationships. So as you continue to feed the machine data, the better it becomes at classifying objects. And some of the challenges that we faced with the YOLO method were troubleshooting program errors, and just figuring out how to speed up the output video results. And now we present our project demonstration. In this demonstration, we have two samples here that were resultants from um, a few of our trials. 
So on the left-hand side, you'll see that we have some drone footage, which ran through our yellow program. And as you can see there, there are annotations of the detections, uh, noting whether it's a car, whether there's a person picked up. And we were really kind of nervous at first about using drone footage to run our yellow uh, code because of the um, the the background subtraction needing to have something a little more static to be able to bounce off of or to, to reference to know what was actually being detected. But we didn't find that same issue in the drone footage, so we were pleased with the, um, the, the actual detections that we were able to pick up. On the right-hand side, you'll see that there's a, a, a code, not a code, but a CSV file screenshot that basically from the detections that you're seeing here in this video, it's actually writing to that CSV file. So that way we can use that file for further um, analysis. To the bottom of both the uh, drone footage and the CSV file, you'll see that there is a code snippet. That code snippet specifically is basically is used what we use to go on and write the data to the actual file. So um, there was a lot of troubleshooting and, and making sure that we understood how to get our data to write to the file and then also how to actually pull that information out. In an upcoming video, uh, actually in the Pi video that you'll be seeing in a couple seconds, you'll see actually in action code as it's being written to the um, CSV file. We'll be showing you how we actually did that. So coming up next, our Pi introduction and our Pi demonstration. Our Raspberry Pi performance test. We headed out to a very busy intersection. We did get a lot of detections people, trucks, cars, traffic lights. We referred to this code when we were talking about the YOLO test. For the first line, the code is is saying write a CSV file entitled vehicle detect and then we created the field names which are the header for our CSV file which are serial number classes and centroids and sizes for every frame ID that is registered then it writes the classes and then it writes the centroids and the sizes we're very happy to be able to look back and see a CSV. We thought, wouldn't it be nifty if we could really see what's happening or see this code being written? So we added in an additional piece of code that just simply said, hey, print this CSV or print these field names and print, these, uh, print this data to the screen. And so this particular visual here is representing the print to screen. This is a file that we've run, and you can see here a screenshot of a portion of a printout from the Raspberry Pi, and you can see how it's very variant and at any particular frame what is actually seen. That concludes our demonstration for traffic video analytics. We'll now have Terrence with the results from our study. And this brings us to our results. Our results are that we were able to detect and track objects in videos captured from both stationary and mobile vantage points, as well as footage captured from a live video feed. Um, we were then able to export that detected object data to a CSV file for documentation. Object data includes what type of object it was, as well as the size and location of the object in the video. And overall, we found YOLO machine learning algorithm to be best suited to our project due to its better vehicle tracking and accuracy. We came to this conclusion because of some of the properties of background subtraction we noticed, which is that background subtraction is best when the camera is stationary, such as in the footage of the freeway overpass. However, the camera in the drone footage is moving, which makes background subtraction not ideal in terms of accuracy. 
Background subtraction also seems to be most accurate when the objects to be detected are closer to the camera. This is demonstrated in the overpass video when the cars are further away and close together. Um, they can be identified as one larger vehicle, but as they get closer to the camera, they are then identified as separate cars. And now we'll hear from Dr. Patterson about the direction of the RIT lesson and activity. There are many lessons to take back to the classroom this year, both technical and procedural. Uh, the new production unit will definitely incorporate the concepts of machine learning, computer vision, and object detection. Now, I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of pushback and a lot of challenges on this one. So we'll have a lot of workshops and grab-and-go videos to support our students as we get them used to this new wave of thinking. And we'll also use HyperDocs, an up-and-coming and very popular um, instructional tool. So I'll definitely be putting that to work as, as well. Now, for our focus, our activity focus will be around facial recognition, sports performance analytics, and of course, forensic data analysis. So now we'll hear from Kayla as she discusses future work. In the future to improve detection performance, we determined that the live feed results could be improved with the use of a faster microcomputer processor. Another factor that may have caused inconsistent detections was the use of the COCO names data set. And the reason why is because that data set itself contains 80 class labels total which is a lot for the Raspberry Pi to process. So if we reduce the size of the data set, that could improve the speed and accuracy of the model. For future applications, the system we've developed can be used as a foundation for the framework development of topics such as collision detection, social, social distancing analysis, and other unique situations. For our references, these are some of our highlighted sources. And we'll pause here for any questions.